All right, today I'm working on a 2002 Ford Taurus, and it's only got 75,000 miles. It's got the Vulcan engine. Uh, this is a 3.0 liter V6, and I'm doing a few different things today. I've already done the transmission fluid and filter and the engine oil. That's not real hard, but I'm going to do the thermostat here, but I'll just show you getting underneath there and getting those uh, bolts off the transmission pan and cleaning out that and cleaning out the metal off of the magnet that's down there is real important change the oil and i'm working on the radiator that's the plug for the radiator right there so it's easy to remove plastic plug you got to be careful and run some water through there let the thing drain out there was a lot of rust in there. I wasn't getting a lot of heat from the inside of the car, which means the heater core might be plugged up. Even though this car only has 75,000 miles, it is also an uh, older car. I mean, 19 years old. So you pop this thing open, you take off that plug, uh, you run a garden hose in there, let it flush out, fill it back up, stick in your um, de-ruster, and then run the car for a while, maybe a day or half a day or at least an hour or two and uh, clean it all out. But one of the things you want to do is replace the thermostat. So this video is going to be on the thermostat. Now on the thermostat, uh, let's see if we can actually see the numbers there. Let's see, I gotta look at this myself. All right, so it should say, uh, if you can focus on this, 190 degrees. So 190 right there. Now the thing with the thermostat is some people think, well, I want the engine to run cooler. So I'm gonna run a cooler thermostat, 165 or 180, and then my engine will run cooler. Well, that's not a good idea. The reason why it's not a good idea is the engine is designed to burn fuel at a certain heat and the catalytic converter, the oxygen sensors, the plugs, and the whole engine is set up around certain temperatures. And that opening up at 190 degrees is important. It helps the fuel burn efficiently. It improves your gas mileage. Now to replace the thermostat, you have to remember to get the gasket when you get the thermostat because these don't come in the box anymore. Uh, you need a razor blade to clean off the housing, the mating surfaces. Sometimes it's hard to clean those mating surfaces, so a nice piece of sandpaper on a flat surface is good. Usually you need a flathead screwdriver uh, to get this hose off right here to pry it away because after many years, these things kind of stick together. So channel lock pliers will help you to get off this uh, type of a hose clamp. You might run into these kinds of hose clamps here, but um, they generally have this one. And usually this is pointed over here. I just like to move it over there. I think it's a little easier. So I'm gonna do this in real time in order to show people, you know, you can change a thermostat yourself. It's not really that hard. I'm gonna set up this camera and you know, we'll see if it works and hopefully we'll have a nice little Nice little video. People can learn how to do this themselves. All right, so one of the first things you gotta do is you gotta get off this hose clamp and you're just gonna squeeze it together and then you're gonna wiggle it back this far or so and just kind of leave it there. And um, one of the other things I wanted to show is you put a towel or something down here so you have a nice surface and you're not accidentally touching the um, negative and the positive uh, battery together. You know, this, this towel gets wet, water goes through there, or a metal tool that's not plastic coated touches those two surfaces um, or something like this. You know, it can t connect those two surfaces and you'll get a spark or an explosion. So just set yourself up so, you know, you can get all your work done without having too much drama. All right, so sometimes this thing will come off fairly easily but usually not and so you just usually want to get some kind of a flat head surface in there you might use a bigger screwdriver you know depending on what you can get in there and that rubber is just kind of stuck stuck to the, um, the aluminum you know you get it off it's not usually that hard but you don't want to tear the hose, you don't want to mess the hose up. And it usually is going to stick like that. Ah, 
Uh, yeah, you should probably wear some gloves too when you're doing this. Yeah, I didn't put any gloves on this time, but. Anyway, some people do these videos and they pre-do everything. And then you get the newbies that say like, dude, I don't know how you did that. I don't know how you got from step A to step B. You know, it doesn't really help me. And they gotta watch 20 videos to figure out how to do something that those of us who've changed a lot of thermostats think, well, it's not that hard. And, you know, we don't often think about the person who's never done it before and absolutely has no clue what you're talking about when you say something like, well, you removed the hose from the housing. I have no clue what you're talking about. So you can see it's kind of loosening up now. There you go. All right, camera got moved around. And now it's coming off. All right, now you can see some corrosion here. And that corrosion there should be cleaned up. You can see some rust. And you can see the three bolts that go on there. Now those bolts look kind of new to me. They don't look like original bolts. Uh, 18 year old car. I've already loosened these bolts up. So you have your socket. Uh, I don't need an extension. And you're just gonna loosen those things up, which I've already done. This is a 10 millimeter. I'm just gonna move this wire out of the way a little bit. Okay, so that's loose. And then the bottom one, that one usually is a little bit different. And the reason why is liquid runs down and sits in that area where the bottom bolt is. And sometimes those bolts can get rusty. They can corrode. And uh, when you're taking them off like this, they can snap. And if they snap, oh, you got a lot of problems because then you got to drill a hole in the middle of the bolt. You got to use an easy out to try and back it out. Oh my God, it can be a big, big problem. The other thing you can run into is people cross threading these. This is aluminum, this is aluminum, and you don't want to cross. Well, that actually it might be not aluminum, I'm not sure, but I, this might be steel. I believe this is aluminum. But yeah, you would have to re thread it. Um, if you cross threaded it, there's only three bolts holding this thing on, so you want to be careful. I'll take this off here in a second, and we'll see how the bolts look. Okay, that bottom one is almost out. It's really, it's really got to be rusty or something, but it's very difficult to get out. And you can see these ones here, these top ones, they come out by hand real easy but that bottom one not so much so just be careful you might want to use some spray or even work on this I know it sounds kind of difficult to imagine this but work on it when the engine's a little bit hot because this surface will expand and it'll allow that bottom bolt to come out a little easier so getting that thing out while the engine's hot might actually help it come out easier I haven't turned this engine on since yesterday got this car yesterday and um, see if I can fix it up and make it run a little bit stronger it already runs pretty good clean it up a little bit turn a little profit okay it's almost out all right let's see here we come all right all right so uh, we're looking at that and boy uh, you can see kind of you can't see a lot of it, but if there's a lot of corrosion on that bolt a lot of rust and that's why it was so hard to get out and um, I'm gonna put this one up in one of the top areas. It wouldn't be a bad idea to replace it, but um, It's not that important. What I'll do is I'll move that one up to the top area and I'll take this one out and you'll see probably that it's cleaner all right, so you don't see a little corrosion there, but no rust, right? Not like the other one. And then this one, again, is probably going to come out pretty easily by hand because no rust, no corrosion. Okay. And again, I know this is going to be a long video, but for newbies, 
they don't know how to do some of this stuff. And, you know, I see a lot of comments and video sections where people are like, yeah, you didn't show me this, and you didn't show me that, and it leaked, and, you know, what good is this video? And they give it a thumbs down, or they say it sucks, or whatever, and it's partly because a lot of us who do work on cars, we just think, oh, man, this is, you know, how, how can you not know what I'm saying? All right, so let's look at this one. All right, so we look at that one, and we do see a little corrosion, a little more rust on that one. So I'll probably uh, put that one up top, and then this other really good one. But again, this is the one that came from the bottom, and you see a lot more rust and a lot more corrosion on that. So I'll stick this one up on the top, the one I just took out on the top, and then the best one I'll put um, on the bottom. All right, so now we have the thermostat. Is that the original thermostat? So we look for the temperature on there, and the temperature on there should be 190 degrees, if it says anything. I can't see what it says, but, you know, it may be the original thermostat, and um, it's supposed to open up in 190. Anyway, um, I'm going to take this out, and I want you to notice the direction that it goes. Now, sometimes people put the thermostat on. They take this off and they think, what the hell, what the hell down position did that thing go in? And they can't remember. The other thing they don't know is where does the gasket go? Because this thing is sitting in a housing right now. And this surface over here is where part of the gasket is. Part of the gasket's right here. And um, you also see that this has all got to be cleaned off, but this is flat. And this is not flat. So I'm going to pull this off and you'll see Okay, a lot more rust and corrosion that's got to be cleaned off, but that part goes down. This bigger part goes in there, but if I just put that on there, it slides all around, and it'll drop down, and as you're putting this in, it'll come out of this little housing here, and uh, you see how that's supposed to sit like that, and you go to put it in, and it drops down a little bit. I'll do it like this. Okay, so it's perfectly seated right there but then it drops down a tiny little bit when you're putting it in. Now, if that drops down a little bit and you go to bolt that together, well, it's gonna leak. So when you're putting this together, you have to put the gasket on top of this. So you clean all this housing off here, you put this on there, the new one, and then you put the gasket on that surface. Okay, so I don't need this uh, old one anymore, but now I have to clean the surface off all right now using a razor blade obviously is a little problematic for a lot of people you can cut yourself slice yourself open it's no fun so you can use these little razor blade holders they work pretty good and um you know you can get a lot of that stuff off you get a lot of the corrosion off but this is aluminum so it's it's a little bit on the uh malleable side it can easily be scratched up it can easily be ruined and uh, you want to be real careful with uh, these housings and if you mess it up or somehow it doesn't work right you can always pick one up at a pick and pull there's lots of these Ford Tauruses out there but better that you should be careful okay, you know, as you can see hopefully some of that uh, housing is or the uh, gaskets coming off and you can also use the razor blade kind of like that. And you're trying to get the, the mating surface real clean. And it's only, you can kind of see where it's flat. You don't got to worry so much about these other areas being super clean, but you got to get that off or else you're not going to get the gasket um, all the way down. You see a little bit of stuff in there i wonder what that is that's the bottom maybe that maybe part of the gasket got stuck in there and that's why the thing was so hard to get off anyway so you can kind of see it's cleaning up you don't need to use permatex and you know gasket maker and all that stuff all right so now i have that all right that's where the sandpaper comes in all right and it's a nice flat surface if i'm moving it around start to see you get a nice flat surface in there it's nice and clean 
and you know I have that interior area uh, here you know where I saw a lot of rust and corrosion so I want to get that out so the thermostat can actually sit in that housing nice and flat I got big chunks of rust flying off here so again let me clean this off All the garbage and rust gets inside the uh, radi radiator and the radiator core. And you can kind of see there's definitely some some rust and corrosion right there. So that uh, thermostat isn't going to sit perfectly flat until you get some of that stuff out of there. All right, good enough. And now we have the majority of the um, gasket is stuck this part all right so you can see with the razor blade and you know having this nice little holder I could actually see some parts of metal getting scraped off okay so you want to be careful all right little bits of metal little bits of aluminum I can see getting scraped away so you got to be careful but again you know if you needed a new thermostat your car was overheating or something and you know you wanted to save yourself a little money you know, this isn't something that you can't do. All right, so again, I'm trying to clean that stuff off and make sure all the old gasket is gone. You can see a little rust inside there, no big deal. So you have an iron engine and metal parts and corrosion, and that's partly what the coolant is to uh, has some rust inhibitors in there and I'm not using gloves I forgot to put them on and I don't want to stop the video and start over so whatever but uh, probably a good idea to use the gloves all right so I have a lot of that gasket off not all of it and you know pretty decent it's not too bad kind of hard to figure out how to get this camera to stay down there in a way that you can actually see what's going on. A little bit more gasket material there. You know, you want to get it off so you can get a nice flat surface. And that's most of it. And you see little bits of metal, so you want to be careful how you're using this. Scratch that surface up because if you scratch it up too much, you'll create a pathway where the uh, water can go. I got most of it off there. All right, so then I'm going to get my uh, sandpaper. I'm going to mess around with it a little bit like that. You know, if you're gonna go buy all this stuff, I guess it'd be cheaper just to pay someone to do this. But the draining and flushing your radiator, you know, I've made videos on it. I know other people made videos on it. And sometimes I don't see them doing the thermostat replacement when they do the drain and flush. In my opinion, anytime you drain and flush, you should replace the thermostat and you should replace it with an OEM, not a lower temperature thermostat. Unless you have some kind of particular reason why you'd want to do that. Alright. So this is pretty clean. It's pretty pretty decent there. A little bit of garbage right there. It's no big deal. Who cares? Alright. So now we have to get the gasket and take it out of the package. All right, so we want it to be nice and clean. Um, it's gonna go on there basically like that, right? But it's gonna go on the housing. Okay, get the little pieces of garbage out of there and you know, make sure this thing's okay, clean. All right, so thermostat goes in that way. All right, and you can see right there it fits. So you gotta be careful how you stick it in there. 
if you look at this it has sort of a warped area right here and it has a little kind of a little I don't know there's a little hole right there there's like a safety hole and you look at the top of this thing and there's like a space up here okay so if you spin this around you can see it doesn't fit just anywhere it has to go in watch right there okay so that's up at the top all right then the gasket goes on all right and you got to be careful because if I put this thing on and uh stupid camera keeps moving around um so i stick this on there and it falls down a little bit then it's not gonna um it's not gonna seal properly the surfaces aren't gonna mate all right so i'm looking for the best screw <laughs> sorry about that and uh the best screw is that one and i'm gonna push this on there and make sure that thing stays in the housing and then i've got the best screw of all three of them the one that has the least amount of corrosion and rust. I'm gonna stick that on there. I'm gonna to try to keep this housing flat up against there because I don't want that thermostat uh, to fall, all right? And this again, the bottom one's got some corrosion in the threads, but I'm trying to do it by hand. I'm trying to get it all the way in there. I'm trying to um, screw it all the way down by hand and uh, it appears to have gone all the way down by hand. And now I have the screw that has quite a bit of rust on it. Okay, I'm gonna move this camera a little bit maybe. All right, so I have the screw that has a little bit of rust on it and I'll just stick that one right here. And that hopefully is gonna be good. And then I got the other one that has some corrosion and some rust on it. And I'll stick that one over here. And I get to get it. You got to get these things in there at least a few turns by hand before you start wrenching on them. And again, I'm holding this thing up against there because I don't want that thermostat to come out of the housing. Okay, I'm going to use my... Um, socket and once I've got a couple of those screws in there yeah that screws bad it's really got a lot of corrosion on it probably should have replaced it but um, you know I mean it'll last a long time I get this bottom one in there get that hose out of the way okay and let's see this one in there again. All right, and get this one. Not going in there very easily, partly because of the um, okay. But I did get it in there several times several screws, several revolutions before I started using a socket. And the reason why is because you want to make sure that you're not going in cross-threaded. Okay, so not very tight. Okay, not very tight. Right there, that's probably tight enough. There's proper torque settings. And if you want to use a torque wrench, you can. But, you know, it's not that tight. I wouldn't even know how to tell you how tight it is but not that damn tight you don't want to snap off any bolts all right now you have this and clearly uh, that's corroded and I'm gonna take off the sandpaper and get rid of some of that and you see the rust you know, that's the stuff that gets in your heater core and your radiator and plugs up the tubing and uh, causes your heater core in the engine, or I'm sorry, in the uh, cabin compartment to not uh, work properly and you don't get any heat coming off of your fan because the heater core is all plugged up with rust. 
Okay, so there we go. And now I got my channel lock pliers here. And I'm gonna grab that. Hopefully, I'm gonna grab it. And move it up the engine hose not pinch your fingers in there or anything like that that can be a problem you, you know let go of it and kind of make sure it's flat and make sure it's on there okay and basically you know that's that's it okay now the real test is uh does it leak when the car starts and that's the main test if it leaks when the car starts well, then you have a problem, don't you? Now I have cleaned the throttle body with some throttle body cleaner and a toothbrush. And you can open up the throttle body by moving this throttle. You don't want to push on the throttle body with your finger, but you can open it up. Inside here is a shaft and the throttle body is like a butterfly valve. It opens like this and you can clean it real good and toothbrush both sides. Uh, there's the mass airflow uh, sensor in here. You can spray some mass airflow cleaner on that and clean that. Replace the uh, air filter. Uh, replace uh, the plugs. Cleaned off all the plug wires. Use um, Bosch. I like Bosch because when you open them up, um, I haven't replaced the back plugs yet, but they, they're they gapped properly and they usually have this around there so the, the thing doesn't bounce around on the box cheap spark plugs don't and you have your thread uh, put that on your threads anti-seize and then your dielectric grease you should put that on the tops of these and around um, where these these surfaces mate you have these electrical connections and then this is a coil pack and then um, on the tops of the plugs and the plug wire housing so that those things can be easy to get off for the next person all right so the question is going to be does it leak it'll be difficult to start probably because i sprayed that stuff in there a lot of throttle body cleaner in there but um yeah it should run fine just got to get that stuff out all right so here's the test running through there so I'm gonna let the car run thermostat doesn't leak and I'm gonna take the car for probably a little drive or I may change those back three plugs but I wanted to do a long video I know this is really long but I wanted to make sure that people who want to know how to do the thermostat actually have a step-by-step -step procedure of how to do the thermostat and I hope this helps <laughs> 